Добър вечер. Докато дам, дадем е възможност на всички да се включат в Zoom срещата, аз ще представя всички участници и ще разкажа малко за нас. Аз се казвам Димитър Александров и съм от Агенция за образование в чужбина SkyMais. Ние заедно с колегите от Радбал имаме удоволствието да организираме тази среща. Като ще разкажа малко за нас. Ние сме Агенция за образование в чужбина, като нашата роля е не само да организираме такъв тип събития, но и да помагаме на студентите в целия процес по ориентиране в програмите, университета, изискванията за кандидатстване, подготовка на документи и по-нататък при успешен прием съдействие за намиране на квартири и всичко, което е свързано с успешното кандидатстване и пребиваване по-нататък в учебните заведения, с които си партнираме, в случая Radboud University, като нашите услуги са напълно безплатни към студентите, тези, които са свързани с партнеращите университети, с които ние работим. Така че възползвайте се от тях. Днес имаме удоволствието Делян Киров, който е студент в Radboud University и Анна Бранд да ни разкажат малко повече за възможностите за обучение в Radboud и въобще да ни дадат малко повече информация за самият университет. Аз и моята колега Ивалина Минчева ще бъдем също онлайн в случай, че има въпроси и към нас. Аз вярвам, че Делян ще може да отговори и на български, на тези от вас, които желаят да зададат въпросите си на български. Това, което бих ви помолил е да задавате своите въпроси в чат-бокса. Аз виждам, че доста хора се включиха вече в него. Предпочитаме него пред Q&A секцията, за да можем и след това в записа да видим всичките въпроси и ако има нещо, което не е отговорено, да ви върнем като отговор. Анна, I think you can start your presentation now. Great, thank you very much. Um, and thank all of you, thank you to all of you uh, for attending this presentation uh, today. Uh, first of all, I would really like to uh, thank Skylines, of course, um, for hosting us today. Uh, my name is Anna Brand and I'm an international marketing and recruitment officer at Radboud University. And uh, today I really want to inform you uh, about everything that Radboud University has to offer. Um, so first of all, where is Radboud University located? As um, I hope you all know by now, Radboud University is located in the Netherlands. Um, and the Netherlands isn't only um, known for its um, water or the tulips or the windmills that you see um, in the back here. It's also really known for its um, high quality education. All of our research universities belong to the top 2% in the world uh, when it comes to the rankings. Um, and we offer great uh, worldwide recognized diplomas here in the Netherlands. Um, so within the Netherlands, um, Nijm or Radboud University is located in the city of Nijmegen, which um, as you can see here, it's that little uh, dot there, is located on the eastern border of the Netherlands, really close to Germany. Um, so it means that it's also very easily accessible for all, for, um, all around Europe. Um, so also from Bulgaria, there's uh, cheap flights that go to Eindhoven, for example, or to Vetsa, which is just across the border in Germany. Um, so as I already said, uh, the reason, one of the reasons that students choose uh, the net, the study in the Netherlands is because it's um, excellent education and research and um, those are the things that we're really known for but also um, we have a lot of uh, pioneers here a lot of entrepreneurial um, figures so we have a lot of um, multinational companies that started here in the Netherlands such as Philips which now of course is known worldwide and Unilever as well, which 
owns most of the popular uh, brand, brands um, in at least in Dutch supermarkets and probably also throughout Europe. Um, but we're also a very multicultural society. Um, we have over uh, 500 different nationalities in the Netherlands, I believe. Um, and also in Nijmegen, we're very multicultural. And we have a um, great value for money education. I'll get uh, to the tuition fees a bit later. But if you compare it to a lot of different um, countries, especially where you, when you're looking for English taught uh, programs, the Netherlands really doesn't compare to that. We also have um, more bikes than people in the Netherlands. Um, just a little fun fact for you. This is one of the um, bicycle racks that we have um, at Radboud University. It's always completely packed with bikes and trying to find your bike is a nightmare. Um, we are one of the happiest uh, nations in the world as well. And of course, um, we are known for great English proficiency. So let's have a look at the city of Nijmegen and why students enjoy it so much. Um, first of all, this is a beautiful uh, picture of the city. It's taken from just outside of the city um, on the Val Beach, which is a little beach next to the river. And it really shows um, kind of the more um, old vibe that the city has, but also the newer modern vibe that the city has. So it's really a mix between old and new. Um, and that's something that I really like as well. Um, so students really choose to study in Nijmegen because it's an extremely lively student town. We have uh, two universities in the city, um, Radboud University, which is a research university, and the Han University of Applied Sciences. So that means that there's a lot of students in the city and we have about 25% of the population of the city is students. We also have a lot of green spaces in Nijmegen and this is something that Nijmegen really values. We used to be the European capital, um, European green capital, I should say. And um, we really value, uh, you know, keeping green spaces in the city and also sustainability in the city. Uh, there's also an extremely rich cultural life. We have a lot of uh, music events that go on, sports events, um, a lot of restaurants as well, and um, also a lot of art events. So there's something there for everybody. Um, as I already explained, uh, because of its location, Nijmegen is also an excellent hub for exploring. Not only Europe, with the uh, close proximity to the airports and of course to the German border, but also within the Netherlands. Um, there's four trains an hour to Amsterdam and to Utrecht, and there's several trains up north or farther west um, in the south as well, so cities as um, Eindhoven and Den Bosch can be easily explored from Nijmegen as well. Um, and it's an extremely uh, bike friendly city. I already showed you the bike uh, racks, of course, at the university. Um, and because it's such a small, medium sized city um, and everything's quite compact, it's really easy to get around by bike. Um, so if you want to travel somewhere, which I mean, there's enough to do in Nijmegen, but sometimes you might want to uh, visit your family or you want to explore a little bit further, um, then it's really easy to um, connect with um, other trains. So you can take trains to other cities in the Netherlands or you can even take trains um, that cross the border. And there's also a service in Nijmegen that's called Flixbus, which is um, buses that go to cities like um, Cologne, Dusseldorf, or Antwerp in Belgium as well. And they're really a lot um, more affordable than the trains are. Um, and if you want to kind of get around Nijmegen, there is a citywide bus network, so it makes it quite 
uh, easy and flexible to get around. But we always um, really encourage students to get a secondhand bike because one, you only have to pay once for your bike. Hopefully, if nothing breaks, at least. Um, and two, I just find it so much easier than the bus because you'd never have to look at a bus timetable again. Um, so it's just, it offers that second level of flexibility, I feel. And then um, I would like to zoom into Radboud University and the programmes that we offer. Um, so Radboud University has a lot of modern facilities. We've uh, been building a lot recently over the last couple of years. And um, as Delian knows as well, we've just opened a new um, building for the Faculty of Social Sciences. So he gets our classes in our newest building, uh, being a psychology student. Um, but each building, each faculty has their own multimedia center as well. So that's really ideal if you um, want to come to campus and study or study in between classes. Um, you really get to make use of that. There's computers there, there's room for your laptop there. Um, so you can really study anywhere on campus. And we have really good IT facilities as well. So the um, there's a university-wide network on campus um, in terms of Wi-Fi. Each room has its own um, smart board as well with uh, facilities to hook up a computer. And um, we have a lot of high-tech laboratories, which are particularly interesting, um, I think, for students who want to study social sciences or who want to study science. Um, and on the background here, you see one of the, um, the laboratories that we have, which is the Highfield Magnet Laboratory. Um, it's also, you can't really see it on the picture here, but it's shaped in the form of a magnet, and it houses one of the world's strongest magnets. Um, as well. So that we have all of that right there on campus. Um, our campus is extremely green. As I already explained, um, Nijmegen finds green spaces extremely important and so does the university. Um, so we try and keep everything as green as possible. So in between the buildings, um, we try and have as much green uh, around. We have a lot of trees um, we have a little park even uh, next to one of the buildings and we are also located on the edge of a park so there's really a lot um, of places to go and explore um, if you want to the entire campus consists of roughly one square kilometer so that makes it really easy to get from one building to the next because all of your classes will also be dispersed over campus um, and our ambition is to become a 100% sustainable campus. We have uh, the Radboud Green Office, which works um, with the university on that. And that's also somewhere where uh, students can come and, um, you know, if they have ideas of how uh, Radboud needs to be more sustainable, um, they can go to the Radboud Green Office and talk to them about it. And a lot of these initiatives have already um, it transpired to something that we really did at the university to improve. Um, so we now have um, tap water points at every uh, building pretty much. So wherever you are on campus, you always have access to fresh water. Um, we also have an extremely international community. We have over 100 different nationalities on campus um, that student and staff and we have um, international student organizations as well that support these students and that organize a lot of events um, for these students. What we value the most at Radboud University is our personal approach to teaching. We find um, quality of uh, education extremely important, but also the personal contact that we can offer. Um, so that means that we don't only have big lecture halls where you sit with 300 students. Of course, you know, you'll find yourself in those occasionally as well. But we also have working groups for all of our classes. And in those working groups, you're only there with about 20 to maybe 30 students. 
Um, so, you know, everybody knows one another personally and the lecturer can really explain um, and get into contact with you directly as well. So that's really nice. Um, and that's something that we really value that our lecturers know um, most, if not all students by name by the end of uh, the block. So that's really important to us. And she, um, lecturers are also extremely approachable. Um, and that's something that's unique for the Netherlands in general, that the hierarchy isn't really there. Um, but lecturers see students as their equals, as their peers. Um, and so we'll always make time for you if you have a question or need any help. Um, you know, if you don't understand something that you've learned in class, for example, you can always approach them to ask further questions and get some help. Um, because we're a research university, we find research extremely important and we do a lot of interdisciplinary research. Um, so that means that faculties work together on different research projects um, and all of our teachers are also researchers. Um, so all of the research is integrated with, within the teaching and that means that um, sometimes you'll actually be taught some of the newest theories or most groundbreaking uh, research that hasn't really been um, established anywhere else yet. Um, I already named one of our uh, research facilities, of course, which is the Highfield Magnet Laboratory. Uh, but we have a number of uh, research facilities on campus. And uh, some of the other really important um, facilities that we have is the Donless Institute for Cognition and Behaviour um, and the Max Planck Institute for Psycholinguistics. And that last one is um, actually an independent German institute and they only have I think one um, research center outside of Germany or at least in the Netherlands and that's located on our campus as well. And then just quickly I wanted to go through our rankings. I already mentioned of course that all of the uh, universities in the Netherlands are within the top 2% uh, of the world and within the Netherlands we are considered be the best traditional university according to students and according to the coast hits of 2021. We have been this for I think nine out of 10 years now. Um, so the past 10 years we've been chosen um, as best traditional university uh, for nine times. And what I mean by best traditional university is that Radboud University offers all of the traditional disciplines that um, one would expect to find in a university. So we have a traditional setup in terms of um, the disciplines that we offer. But that doesn't mean that we're a traditional boring uh, university, we're anything but, and I hope that um, my presentation so far has shown you that. Um, we find it extremely important to modernize and to offer good quality education and to really interact with our students. Um, and then these are the other rankings as well. We uh, rank 136 in the Times Higher Education ranking and 214th in the QS ranking as well. Um, these are all of our bachelor programs. Unfortunately, I don't have the time to uh, go through all of them individually, but this uh, gives you a good overview of what we offer in English at least. We have many more other Dutch taught programs um, but this is what we offer in English and if you would like to have more information on these programs you can always get in touch with Skylines of course um, or have a quick look around on our website. Uh, the admission requirements that we have is that we ha um, require students to obtain a a Bulgarian high school diploma with a GPA of at least five um, and diplomas will be assessed individually uh, also per program it can uh, the admission requirements can differ so these are the general requirements but it is possible that for some of our other program or some of our programs we have some stricter requirements or different requirements um, we always have um, 
very specific requirements for our subject, the subjects that we look for. So, for example, for computing science, they would look for completely different subjects than um, for business administration or arts and culture studies. So that's something that keep in mind. Um, and if you do want to find out more about the admission requirements, I always recommend that you contact Skylines um, as they will have them for you um, and they can help you further. And we also require um, students from Bulgaria to obtain an English language diploma as well. Uh, we have three programmes that um, are selective programmes or number of sixes programmes and thus have a selection and placement procedure. Uh, these are artificial intelligence, biology and psychology. And they have different deadlines uh, to the rest of our programs. So that's really important to keep in mind. I'll come back to the deadlines later. Um, and on the website that it's mentioned here, you can also find a bit more information on what exactly the selection and placement um, procedure entails. So in short, it just means that um, students need to uh, go through extra steps in order to obtain a place uh, within the programme. So uh, whereas for most of our programmes, uh, we don't have an extra procedure. If you meet the requirements um, and the um, admission board has decided to conditionally admit you, then you have a place in the programme. Uh, for these three programmes, um, being conditionally admitted doesn't guarantee that you have a place in the programme. Uh, we also have a lot of English taught master programs um, and these are in the fields that you can uh, see listed below. Um, we have too many for me to list here, uh, but these are the fields where you can find the um, programs in and a lot of our programs um, have specializations as well. So. Uh, for example, um, computing science won't just be computing science, but they'll have a lot of specializations. So you really get to delve in deeper into the uh, program that you're interested in. Um, so unlike a bachelor's program, which is a little bit more gen generic, here you really dive into that little bit of the program that you're interested in. Um, these are, again, the generic requirements that we have. Um, we require all students, of course, to obtain a bachelor's degree in the field that, uh, that they want to study. And the bachelor's degree needs to be equivalent to that of a Dutch research university. And this is something that we look at through different um, systems that we have access to. Um, and we uh, are provided with a diploma evaluation and then the admissions board can um, decide whether it is indeed um, equivalent and whether you are admissible. Um, each programme will have their specific requirements on the subjects that they need. Uh, and again, we require an English language certificate as well. Uh, some of our programmes, if you're not directly admitted into the master's programme, have a pre-master's programme. Uh, these programs are really pre to prepare you for, ma for the master's program. Um, and it could be that your bachelor's degree is not deemed to be equivalent uh, to that of a Dutch research university. Or it could be that, for example, you studied business administration and now you want to move into computing science. Um, they found your background interesting enough. They see enough subjects that, um, you know, you would be able to uh, push, uh, proceed into that program, but because you're lacking specific computing science uh, subjects, they would uh, like you to prepare via pre-master's program. So it really helps you to catch up with the um, background of the program. So it's a really great way for students to uh, kind of get um, more information and be more prepared for their master's program that way. Uh, I already mentioned a little bit about the teaching style at Radboud University. Uh, so we have bigger lectures, but we also have working groups. Um, and within those working groups specifically, the teaching is extremely interactive 
and um, we really value student input. In the bigger lectures, um, we also really value student input and feedback and questions. Um, but of course, with there being more students, there might be a little bit less room for individual um, time and individual attention, which there definitely is in the working group. And in the working groups, you very often also are required to work on your soft skills, so your presentational skills, your team working skills, those kind of things are also things that we find important. Um, we also have study advisors available for all students. Um, so if you are struggling in your course or you have questions regarding which electives to take, you can always go to a study advisor. Um, and we offer resets for all classes within the same year. So for example, if you fail, um, a course in block one, which we never hope happens, but does sometimes happen, um, you'll be able to reset that course within the block two. Um, so you always get two chances for an exam within the same year. Um, this is a little bit more about the application procedure. Um, in short, we have a system in the Netherlands called StudyLink. All students are required to first um, register there. And then you can upload your documents to our own system, which is called the Cyrus application. Um, but of course, the Skylines can always assist you in that. Um, so they know everything about the application system at Radboud University. They're a really trustworthy partner um, for us. So if you want to um, apply, you can always get advice from them as well. Uh, these are the deadlines. As I already mentioned, um, our selective bachelor's program have an earlier deadline, which is the 15th of January. Um, we have a 1st of May deadline for EU students, and that is for students who wish to um, make use of our uh, accommodation services. And I always highly, highly recommend students to apply before the 1st of May uh, because then at least you have the uh, possibility to go through the accommodation service that we offer. And if you apply after the 1st of May, then you no longer have access to that um, service. So that's just a shame. Uh, but if you do decide to apply a bit later or you're not sure before the 1st of May, you can always um, apply. It says the 1st of June here, but that should be the 1st of July. Um, so you still have a couple of months then to apply as well. And then just how much would it cost to study at Radboud University? Always important to know. I already um, mentioned that the tuition fees here are quite um, good compared to uh, other universe or other countries that offer English taught education. Um, so for the coming academic year, EU students are required to pay 2,209 euros. And for first year bachelor students, that tuition fee is actually half. Um, so that's approximately 1,100 euros. Uh, for masters, it's the same tuition fee um, as well. Then these are roughly the expenses that we uh, expect that you will incur uh, when living in Nijmegen. Um, so in total, accommodation will be about 4,800 euros, living expenses about 4,000 euros, study books, materials and insurance. They're kind of the basics um, that you need to take into account. Uh, we do, however, see that students um, manage to live, to have less living expenses, for example. Um, and often you can also buy secondhand study books or get a discount if you um, become a member of the study association. So that's also a um, great way to save uh, some money. But just keep in mind that this is roughly what we expect students to spend their money on. Um, we will, of course, help you in a lot of different ways. Uh, we find student support extremely important at the university. So um, before arriving at university, we will uh, help you with housing. I already mentioned our accommodation service, which um, of course you can obtain if you apply before the 1st of May, 
Um, this is assistance that we offer you to find um, accommodation. We work with a number of um, third parties uh, that offer accommodation and thus we are able to offer quite a few of our students accommodation um, when they come, especially international students. And then I don't think we've done this for the past couple of years because of COVID, but normally we would be at Schiphol Airport in order to welcome you when you arrive. Then during your study, um, we have extremely many resources uh, when it comes to support, but we do expect students to come to us and request that support. So not necessarily handed to you, but it's, it is available. Um, we, as I already mentioned, we have study advisors, um, we have mentors, those are generally in the first year of the bachelor's program for academic skills, um, most students will have a mentor. We have tutors as well. Um, and then more at central level, we have student deans, uh, student trainers, student psychologists. So really any problems that you have or anything you need help with, um, we have available at the university. We also, of course, have a great student life, both on campus and off, camp uh, off campus. This is one of the events that is generally uh, organized on campus. It's called Radboud Rocks, and um, it's a music festival that we organize every year on campus. Uh, so that's really nice. Um, a lot of students and a lot of staff as well get involved and um, attend all these bands, and it's usually begins late afternoon and continues in, well into the night um, so it's really nice and then we also have an orientation week at the beginning of each year and generally takes place in the third week of august and it really helps you to get to know the campus in the city get to know your students uh, your fellow students and helps you to get make friends um, also helps you to be informed about your um, study program, where to go for books, um, how the scheduling works, uh, who your study advisor will be, what the classes are going to be like. So all of that information is given during the orientation week. Uh, on campus, we also have the sports centre, um, which is considered to be the number one university sports centre in the world. Um, we have more than 80 sports on offer and all of that is included in the um, 100 euros that you pay per year to be a member of the uh, sports center. And I always like to share this um, good fact because I work at the Nijmegen School of Management and it's uh, attached to the Nijmegen School of Management. So if you want to study something in business economics, political science, for example, um, you can just walk from your building to the sports center without having to go through the rain if it's raining. So I always like that. Um, there's a lot of student associations in Nijmegen as well. And each um, study program also has a study association. Um, and these are kind of the fields um, that you can find study associations in, but there's pretty much an association for everything. Um, if you want to work as a student, it is possible. Um, we have jobs available at the university as well. Um, and in the city, there's also a number of uh, student jobs available. Very often, knowing a little bit of Dutch is useful, but students have found jobs without knowing Dutch. Um, however, because of the um, fast pace of our programs, we don't necessarily recommend first year bachelor students to obtain a job immediately. Um, we would really recommend that students uh, come to the university, kind of get used to student life, get used to being in a new country, in a new city as well, um, and get used to the way of um, the university. And then after the first block, if you feel completely comfortable, then might be the time um, to start finding a um, job. But just because the study program is already quite demanding, we don't necessarily advise uh, students to take a job straight away. So I've given you a lot of information in quite a short time. Um, and I thought I'd recap um, 
just by sharing the five reasons why uh, students choose to study at Hathwaite University. Um, so first of all, as I mentioned, we're the best traditional university in the Netherlands. We have a wide range of study options, as you saw. Our diploma is um, recognized worldwide. We have a very personal approach to teaching and we have excellent services and facilities. So if you want to stay in touch, um, these are the ways in which you can stay in touch. You can always email us any questions or first um, ask Skylines, they might have the answer to your questions. And then um, if not, they can always contact us as well. Uh, we also have a number of online events coming up. Uh, we actually have a bachelor's virtual open day um, on the 14th of October. So that's just in a week's time. Um, we also host a lot of webinars. Um, we're attending a lot of virtual fairs, although we hope to be uh, coming to Bulgaria um, in the spring of next year. If you want to meet us in person, um, we have experience days, uh, student for a day activities as well. Um, so there's a lot on offer for students. Uh, you can find everything on the website as well. Um, and these are the uh, opportunities for master's um, programs. So as you can see, quite um, similar uh, events there and the virtual master's open day is on the 28th of October and if you would like to visit us actually in the flesh in the Netherlands um, you are more than welcome to attend one of our open days uh, which will be in November. The bachelor's open day is on the 5th and 6th of November and if I'm not mistaken the master's open day is on the 27th of November. Um, so just keep those um, dates in mind if you're interested in visiting us. Uh, thank you very much um, for your patience and for your time. Um, if you have any questions, um, please pop them in the chat. Uh, we'll be happy to answer them either in Bulgarian or in English. Um, I see that um, there was a question whether the presentation will be uploaded somewhere later, and this will indeed be the case. Um, so Skylines will uh, make sure that presentation is uh, online for you and they'll send you a link directly to the presentation as well. Uh, so no worries if you missed anything or want to go over something again, the presentation will be shared with you. Um, if you don't have excellent results in your exams, um, what can you do? That um, is a good question, of course. We always try um, to look at the entire picture, so it's always worth getting in contact with the um, uh, with the program or just applying and see what um, happens. Um, but yeah, the programs generally look for specific GPAs and um, so that's just good to uh, keep in mind. Um, what is the English diploma needed to apply for bachelor's degree um, and what is the deadline about it, uh, deadline for it? Uh, that's the question from Theodora. Um, so the um, English diploma that we need for bachelor's degrees is an IELTS, a TOEFL or a uh, Cambridge CA or CPE certificate. Um, you can take any of these exams. Uh, the uh, requirements per like the scores per uh, diploma differ per program. So it's always good to check um, the website just to make sure which um, English requirements there are exactly. Um, and then I also see, uh, yeah, if I uh, ask a similar question, 
Um, oh yeah, and the deadline for the English certificate is later than the deadline for applying. Uh, so EU students can um, upload the uh, scores for the English um, exams until the 15th of August. Um, and yeah, the level of language we need you need is um, specific to the program. So I would say check the program uh, requirements. Um, then Antonia asks, I'm studying in a DP program. Would that give me extra credit when I'm applying? I'm guessing, Antonia, that you mean an international baccalaureate diploma program. Um, and that's definitely a really good um, diploma to have. Um, those are accepted by us as well. It's not necessarily better or worse than the Bulgarian diploma, however. Um, I see there's a lot of questions coming in both in the chat and the Q&A, so I'm just trying to kind of uh, go through of them. Um, Simona, no, we won't have webinars for individual bachelor programs. However, um, I do highly recommend registering for the virtual open day because there we do have program specific um, videos. Uh, so you can um, watch those, ask questions uh, to students who are currently studying uh, the programs as well. Um, the blocks per year for masters are the same as the blocks per year for bachelor. So all programs have four blocks a year, um, and those are kind of within the two semesters a year as well. Um, the master programs mission requirements are they based on GPA or credits? That depends on the programs. Some programs don't look at GPAs at all. Other programs do. Um, in general, we just look that you've obtained a bachelor's degree um, at a research university from a relevant field as well. Uh, Specifically, Asian linguistics bachelors, no, we don't um, offer any of those. Um, it is possible to candidate for a master if we have one already. Uh, and we do accept some Cambridge certificates for the application. Um, just check our website and it will be there. And the bachelor programs have uh, are all three years. Uh, sorry, I should have mentioned that earlier. Um, let me see. How many students go to this university a year? Um, about, I think this year we have almost 25,000 students. Um, so that seems like a quick, not uh, quite a big number, but uh, we have a lot of different programs. So they're very, dispersed over all the programs that we offer. Uh, and Theodora, I see that you um, asked whether uh, there could be a bit more explanation about the psychology program. I think Dalian already um, um, offered you his yeah. assistance, but Dalian, maybe you can uh, say something about this uh, psychology program. Yeah, I, I sent her the main page of the website, the psychology program, and asked in case is there's anything particular that she would like to know. And I would be happy to help uh, so that I don't interrupt you. Maybe we can continue in a personal chat. That would be fine. Yeah, because uh, Elyon studies psychology, so he knows everything there is, uh, you need um, about the program specifically. Mm -hmm. um, and we you definitely don't have a lower chance of being accepted if you apply a year or more after you've graduated high school. Um, we just look at your high school diploma um, and we're not affected by uh, you taking a gap year. I think uh, if you're not sure about what you want to study, uh, gap year is an excellent um, idea or you know maybe you want to save a little bit of money before uh, moving. There's absolutely no problem. Um, that won't affect affect your admission. I think that were all of the program, uh, all of the questions up until now. Um, but if you have any further questions, please feel free to pop them. 
Um, I just saw another one come uh, up. In many universities, you need two languages. Um, so I'm guessing the question is that you uh, do we, you need two languages at Radboud University? Uh, no, you don't necessarily um, need any of the or need any Dutch to study at Radboud University. Um, only English is needed. We do advise students to learn a little bit of Dutch when um, you're here. We have social Dutch courses, for example, as well that we offer for free. Um, just so you know the basics of Dutch. And uh, that will really help um, you to, uh, you know, kind of integrate a bit more into the culture. Um, so I hope that kind of helps uh, answer the question. Uh, are we supposed to get vaccinated before coming if we get accepted? As far as I know, at the moment, um, the Dutch government doesn't uh, demand you to be vaccinated when uh, you come to uh, the Netherlands. Um, but I don't know what the policy will be in September of next year, of course. Um, so right now, vaccinations in the Netherlands at least aren't mandatory. So we can't, also can't expect that of um, foreigners traveling to the Netherlands. Uh, but yeah, um, of course, everything could change within the next year. We never know. I will try to address Theodore's question. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. I'm not completely sure about her second uh, question that I study at the American College of Sofia. And then should I have both diplomas when applying? I think uh, she would only apply with one, <laughs> correct? Yeah, you can, of course, um, provide us with both, um, might have pros and cons, uh, but in general, um, if you meet the admission requirements for one of the two diplomas, then that's enough. And also, if right now you already want to decide uh, that you only, for example, want to graduate with the um, Bulgarian that diploma, that's also absolutely fine. Can I add something here? Yeah, of course. Okay, it's important if she is applying with the, she can choose, but if she decides to choose the American diploma, I believe that you would require a, um, a, a advanced uh, placement subjects, APs. Yeah, we would require four APs yes. in general, yeah. So to answer this question, if you don't have APs, and the APs are mentioned in the admission requirements for the program in the website, if you don't take any APs or those who are relevant for the program, then you should apply with the Bulgarian diploma. Yeah, that's good to add, yeah. Um, and then there's a question about uh, the total cost of studying at the university. Um, I would recommend to go back through the presentation when you uh, receive it, because I think that's the easiest overview. Um, then you'll know exactly what the study costs per year and also what we um, kind of the yearly expenses that we uh, expect you to make. So then uh, you can make that calculation. Um, Duigu said, I know Deutsch and English. Yeah, that's definitely enough to study at Radboud University. Then I think you already know uh, more than most, so that's good. Um, there are, whether there are available internships after graduating. In general, Radboud University, because we're more focused on a research university, doesn't um, really support a lot in terms of internships. Uh, but some of our programs do have uh, internships integrated into the program. Uh, so if you look at our master's programs in uh, geography, spatial planning and environment and society studies, for example, they have internships integrated. Um, into the program and in psychology, not necessarily internships, but more research projects um, during the program as well. Um, but uh, we do have a career office that um, offers uh, support in finding a job after graduation as well. Uh, so that would be good to contact directly. 
Uh, so, Christina, I um, already answered your question regarding uh, being vaccinated. Uh, so that's at the moment not mandatory. Um, and Delion, maybe you want to explain a little bit more about what your study situation is at the moment. Yeah, for sure. So right now, they're all uh, most programs, I think, if not all of them, are trying to convert from online to offline. So at campus, in-person teaching. Uh, right now, immediately right now, uh, some programs are kind of in the middle uh, because they had or the new changes came in after already it was planned. I do think that for the new year, um, they're going to try to have most things in person and on campus. Uh, and that's only going to be a trend that continues. So they want more of that, of course, depends on the COVID uh, restrictions at the time, hopefully they allow it. Um, but right now it's kind of in the middle. Uh, I assume maybe you could expect something uh, to be mostly in person at the start of next year. And yeah, that, that's my experience. Yeah, um, as Delion said, we are kind of in a transition period um, in the Netherlands. We're seeing um, kind of a stable number of uh, cases. And, um, at least here, we believe that the vaccination scheme is really helping in that and supporting that. Um, and that means that we'll only be able to open up uh, further. Uh, so as last year, it was really a lot online and barely any classes took place on campus. This year, we expect um, the number of classes to um, be offline to only grow and grow um, and the situation with COVID in the Netherlands to be quite stable. I could also try to answer Janetta's question about the yeah, exchange okay. programs. Okay. I'm not completely sure if the psychology program is special in the way it does it, but you could correct me if uh, it's of course, differences. Yeah. Uh, so definitely there's a chance of getting in the exchange programs. Uh, now, it depends exactly what you mean. In your third year of your bachelor's, your whole sem second semester, you can choose courses from any university or <laughs> from a very wide variety of universities around the world. And it could also mean that you're able to travel to there. And so, for example, the psychology program has links to many, many, many countries, maybe more than 50. I'm not completely sure, but there are very much. And you can spend, for example, the second half of your bachelor's there. Or also, uh, when it comes to your master's, you could spend your internship also abroad, uh, which could be half year. I believe maybe some masters have also even longer internships. So that's what I know. Yeah, and um, for other programs, it's quite similar. Uh, generally, exchanges take place in the third year of the bachelor's programs. Um, for psychology, it's in the second semester. Some programs also offer them in the first semester. So either you can go abroad in the first semester or the second semester um, for those programs. Um, or you can do an exchange at a university in the Netherlands as well. That's also possible for some programs. Um, so if you, you know, don't necessarily want to go abroad, but you've seen that at Wageningen in a university, they offer extremely interesting courses for you. You could also go and take some classes there. Um, and uh, in our master's program as well, there's room um, for elective courses, which you can either take abroad or um, at the university here in the Netherlands. Um, and then there's a question about more seminars like this one. Well, that's the one for Skylines, I think. Um, we'll be uh, working with Skylines again in uh, February. It won't be a, sermon, a seminar like this, but we um, would really, really love to meet you in person. And then we'll uh, hopefully be able to travel to Sofia and um, talk to you in person about uh, Harvard University then. Uh, so I would say uh, keep an eye on the Skylines website um, on when the events will take place. Uh, an event that was a little bit closer would be, I guess, something that's like the Bachelor Open Day at Radboud. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That's occurring on the 14th of October. And generally, a lot of similar questions are tackled. Maybe there's also students more focused on the question and answer like uh, part also. 
yeah and there's a whole q a with students so you can find out everything about student life as well um and on that topic um is it hard to find housing dalian what was your experience uh the simple answer is yes uh like radbot really helps uh, in the first year when applying it's if you use the housing assistance i have a lot of friends that used it i actually was a bit too late in using it uh and so i had to find one myself and and that didn't go too great personally <laughs> it took me some time to find a place after already i arrived so i had to spend some time at a hotel uh, which was a bit pricey housing is it is is difficult to find, but if you prepare appropriately and you start two months in advance, one month in advance, and you really ask around, your chances are much, much higher to find one. But generally in the Netherlands, in general right now, the housing situation is quite difficult. Uh, maybe it could be that uh, you find a place that's not ideal for you, but it could be temporary until you find a good one. Um, Generally, though, uh, the quality of the housing in Nijmegen are good. You, you don't have a very, very small chance that you end up in some place that is unhygienic or very dirty or anything like that. So generally, the buildings and all that are pretty decent quality, at least. And so it's only a problem of uh, making sure you get the contract. Yeah, and that's why, um, of course, as Zelian explained, he was a little bit too late in applying uh, for the housing service. That's why we really, um, of course, recommend all students to apply before the 1st of May, because, uh, yeah, we don't want to see students um, in a situation like Zelian's where you have to spend your time in a, a hotel. Um, and what I sometimes also see from students is that they do apply before the deadline get a housing offer but decide that they think that they can find something cheaper more affordable in a better location themselves and then don't find something so i always also recommend to please take the offer you can always i think after six months you can move out um and if not after a year as well so it's always a possibility to just you know take that offer stick with it for a couple of months and then uh, move on if you find something else. But at least then you know that you have accommodation when you come uh, to the Netherlands. Um, then there's a question about the CV and motivation letter. Uh, we do require a CV for all programs when applying. Um, motivation letter really depends on the study program. Um, if the study program needs it, then Skylines will know and it will be mentioned on the website as well. Um, Duigu also asks um, study and technology. Um, do we offer programs like that? Um, math and technology, sorry. Um, we don't really offer any engineering programs in English at Harvard University. And um, there's only three technical universities in the Netherlands that do, do offer engineering. Um, so if you're interested in studying engineering, um, then maybe uh, talk to Skylines and uh, they'll have a bit more information on where you can study engineering. I would say Radba, uh, a program such as artificial intelligence can get close to that, which is also a very good program. Yeah, uh, that's, that's true, exactly of course. Yeah, no, that's uh, one of the mo more technological uh, programs that we offer, and it's also an extremely interesting um, program as well. And then you also ask what our jobs are. Um, so I'm an international marketing and recruitment officer, so I work for the university um, full time. And Delian is a student, but he's one of our student ambassadors. So that's one of the jobs, um, for example, that we have at the university. Uh, at the university on offer as well. Um, scholarships, I did just answer a question about scholarships. Uh, we don't have any scholarships available for EU students, unfortunately. Or maybe I didn't answer that yet, but we don't offer any uh, scholarships. 
and um, we don't need recommendation letters. Um, so that's not uh, something that you need to have when applying. Um, what happens if grades in specific subjects are required for applying? But I don't study some of them in the 11th and 12th grade. Um, some programs will offer uh, some exams. So we have uh, for mathematics, most programs have a number of exams that they um, accept, for example. Um, some of them are, can be taken online. Some of them um, can be taken in the Netherlands. So it really uh, depends on the uh, program. But if um, it is a subject that you can take an exam for, then um, you'll usually be notified by the program when you're applying. So I'm just wondering if uh, anybody has any further questions. Um, you can also, of course, ask about student life because uh, Del Young can answer uh, all the questions about student life that you have. Um, and can share his experience. Um, but otherwise, if you don't have any further questions, then I um, suggest that we finish off soon. Oh, I don't see any other questions coming in. No, me uh, neither. Thank you very much, uh, guys. Thank you for the great presentation. Uh, just to mention that uh, all the registered uh, participants will receive this uh, uh, presentation uh, via email and a lot of uh, useful information, including uh, open days and uh, everything that you guys uh, are organizing in the coming days. Yeah, of course. No, that's great. Thank you very much, everyone. And um, have a great evening. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank the you. same to you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Anna and Guillaume. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you very much.